If there's one thing that flat earthers can't wrap their heads around, apart from the shape of the earth of course, then it's outer space. And this week on Flat Earth Friday, it looks like our favourite Flurf CC, Chris from New York, Westchester County, has got a bee in his bonnet about space. Roll the titles. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today's video, a huge thank you to the sponsors today, Raycon. So we've already had Mother's Day here in the UK, but I know it's fast approaching over there in the US. And Raycon's everyday earbuds are the perfect gift for your mum. Whether she's hitting the gym or busy at work, or taking one of the many phone calls that she may or may not put on loudspeaker. Give your mum the gift of premium audio that goes where she goes. And their latest model is better than ever. With a 32 hour battery life and multi-point connectivity that lets her pair up to two devices at once. She'll never ask you for Bluetooth help ever again. Personally, my favorite function on the everyday earbuds is the quick charge function. 10 minutes of charging yields 90 minutes of battery life. And they've got active noise cancellation too. I often use them when the kids are running right at home and I'm listening to a podcast and I bet the mums in your life could too. I've also been loving these cool protective case covers. Check out this design. It complements the earbuds color quite nicely. And not only do these cases look great, it supports wireless charging too. So I don't have to take this cover off to get my 90 minutes of battery life from only 10 minutes of charging. Go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 20% off site-wide. Thanks again, today's video brought to you by Raycon. Right, on with today's video, which as we know is from CC. His video is just entitled Vacuum on our flat earth. And he starts with a little piece that some of you might have heard before. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the USS Enterprise. It's continuing mission. <laughs> Sorry, it sucks. It doesn't suck, as you say. The next generation is peak Star Trek. How very rude. But the whole point of, um, of that show um, well, not the show. Forget about the show. Forget about it. My, how, how can you continue the mission? How can you even start the mission when you can't get into space? Well, Star Trek The Next Generation was set in the year 2364. I think they had no problems getting to space, and I don't think we will either in that year. Don't you see that? You can't go to space. You can go to other lands. Yes. Yes, you can. Pass the Arctic Wall. Yes, you can go there. The Arctic Wall? What is that? A wall in the Arctic as well? Where does that come from? But you can't get into space. Space doesn't exist. And I'll tell you why. Because rockets, if space did exist, would not work in space. Now, forget all the complex engineering problems that scientists solve to get rockets to orbit. This man in a car by the side of the road says that your rocket won't work in a vacuum. It's hilarious to me how confident Chris is with this. His country was the first country to put people on the moon and here he is saying that space is fake. Unbelievable. Now they say, oh well, he must be some sort of scientist to understand how rockets work. Well, no. Well, yes. Rockets work in a vacuum because of Newton's third law. You must know the one, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. They work by effectively pushing against their own exhaust. They don't need a medium to push against. The gases that are reacting and expanding in the combustion chamber are pushing out in all directions, but there's a nozzle. And since that nozzle is open at one end, all those gases and exhaust can only push in one direction, which makes the rocket go forward. Uh, you take a vacuum seal box and you try to light a match in it and it has no air, the match won't ignite. Yes, the match won't ignite without oxygen, so there can be no combustion. That requires the presence of oxygen. What is your point here? You see, that's the problem with rockets is they need ignition. Okay? There is no ignition in space. It's impossible. It's a vacuum. There's no air. You know what air is? That's what I'm breathing right now. 
That's what you're breathing watching this video. Yeah, but there's no air in space. It's a vacuum. You don't need air in space for a rocket to work. Let's take the Saturn V as an example. That was the rocket that sent Apollo to the moon. The ignition occurred when the rocket mixed RP1, basically kerosene, with liquid oxygen. The oxygen is supplied by the rocket, not by the air. It's simple, really. Okay, see rockets don't work in space, but let's just say in this imaginary Walt Disney World, they actually do, okay? Which we of course know they do. Okay, so now you're propelling through space in a vacuum with a rocket that cannot ignite in a vacuum, but <laughs> how do you control this rocket? Where is this rocket going to? Because we are traveling through space in the solar system at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour. Yes, we are, and a rocket's speed is relative to that. And when it comes to steering, the rocket's engines can swivel or gimbal a little bit, changing the direction of the thrust. By angling that thrust, the rocket can tilt in the desired direction and change its trajectory. This is the main steering method in the early stages of flight, especially when the rocket is still in the atmosphere. If the main trajectory is good after launch, you don't need to do much after that. So once you leave Earth, just like in a helicopter, when I, this is my, my secondary question, why can't I just go up in a helicopter and just stay up there and hover and then just China <laughs> revolves around, huh? And I'll just land right down. Saves a lot of fuel, doesn't it? That's good for the, for the uh, environment. You know, we'll just all take helicopters and just hover up there, but you can't. Yes, because the helicopter would be in the Earth's atmosphere, which also rotates. Couple that with the fact that the helicopter conserves Earth's angular momentum. When it takes off, you can see clearly why it wouldn't work the way you think it would. Okay, because we don't really know where the spin begins, right? But, but, okay, back, back to the rockets. Okay, so when you leave space, when you leave Earth, Okay, you are now in space, so you've broken out of the gravitational pull of Earth. Okay, and now you're in space, you're in free fall right now, supposedly. Okay, so now you've got a rocket and you're going to go to Mars or maybe the moon. Okay, so because that's only 260, you know, 8,000 miles away. So let, let's let's push for that. So you are going to propel this rocket into space with a mathematical computation here on Earth, an unmanned ship that has this math inside of it that's going to land on this dusty, rocky ball in space. Yes, but when we do things like that, the initial trajectory is set so the spacecraft and the moon can intersect at the right time and place. So in the case of the Apollo missions, the spacecraft first entered a highly elliptical orbit around Earth. Then at the right moment, it performed a translunar injection burn, propelling it into a path that would intersect the moon's orbit. And it's landing there right now as we speak. As a matter of fact, there are rovers now, right now on the moon. If you think about this nonsense NASA has been giving you, if you put your mind to it and actually grasp the stupidity. Uh-oh, he's starting to get angry. Okay, and but yet, it, maybe I should put a, a, a white coat on. Uh, and, and, and then you'll believe me, right? That's how much nonsense the average person believes. That they can actually go to Mars to the moon, to Saturn, to Pluto, to all of this nonsense, and that gravity exists, that, that it, it actually, we know how it works. Just because you can't believe that we can send things to planets, or that gravity works, it does not mean that those things aren't true. It just means you don't believe it. There's a bit of a disconnection here with what you can grasp at being true, with what actually is true. When scientists themselves have specifically said, we have no idea how gravity works. We just know what it does. If that was totally true, what would be the problem with that? Just curious. We're not gonna make things up if we don't know something. Over and over and over again, year after year after year, we have been telling you this, but people are still not waking up. I think he's more angry that people aren't waking up, isn't he? 
I'll be honest, there were a few F-bombs that I had to edit out in that last clip. Okay, they're still believing this SpaceX is gonna go to the Mars. We're gonna colonize the Mars. What? what? Wait a minute. Why are we not colonizing the moon right now? Okay? Why isn't there a Wendy's up there? Why am I not playing baseball right now on the Oh oh, <laughs> oh has he finally lost it? Baseball on the moon. Just like golf, right? Uh, Neil Armstrong did that, didn't did he? shoot off a golf ball. Where did that golf ball ever go? I must have went out. Oh, I know where it is. It's, it's by the Tesla car, right? Yes, it's floating around out there. It might have landed on Mars. It sure has. And that's where your brain is on Mars right now. If you believe any of this, if you believe in rockets that can propel themselves into space, if you believe anybody is ever going to land on anything ever Again, you're delusional. Well, I guess that makes me delusional in your eyes then, Cece. But again, that's your opinion, isn't it? And an incorrect one as well. You will never, ever see that again. In your grandchildren, and before that, and after that, you'll never, ever, ever see that again. They got away with it once, and they can't get away with it again. I cannot wait for CC's reaction video to Artemis landing on the moon. Cannot wait. I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I just, it's, it's, it's threefold now. And I'm, I'm so happy it's happening so quickly now with the politics and space. And now they're actually trying to do something because they're scared. They're scared of something. Could the, could it be the two sons up there? The two sons, Chris. The two sons. How exactly are there two sons? He just makes stuff up as he goes along, doesn't he? That we'll be eventually be able to see it. Could it be that people are waking up to the nonsense? You know, maybe we haven't landed on anything with uh, a person and walked out on anything physically in the last, you know, almost 60 years now. <laughs> are actually people waking up and they're getting scared is my question perhaps they must be okay they must be scared of what exactly that we'll be going back to the moon soon i doubt it i'm just glad it's all happening and i'm glad we could all witness this <laughs> hmm. See, once you become a flat earther, you, you realize that, I mean, everything is fake and you've got to deal with it, you know, and, and I do not recommend you flat smack anybody at all right now in this time, maybe 10 years ago, but right now I don't recommend it. Um, I don't think it's advisable <laughs> to be honest with you. And I think there's a reason why he's saying this. Over the last 10 years, Flat Earth has exploded as a concept, and more people are aware of it than ever before. They find it funny because, of course, it's preposterous. Some people might even know the, some of the players in the community, like UCC or Eric DeBay or others. They know it's nonsense, and they don't like to be told something that isn't true. And I want to finish on this, Chris. What is more likely? Everything is fake, as you say, or You've been led down a garden path of misinformation that makes you think everything is fake. Have a think on that one, my friend. Well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday all wrapped up. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of CC's rant there. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Plus, hit that thumbs up button as well. It's very useful for engagement. Thank you. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Remember, go to buyraycon.com slash Simandan to get 20% off site-wide. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then. <laughs>